Hello everyone, welcome back from the break. Okay, hope, um, hope everyone's back. Um, okay, so uh, just to do a quick recap, of what we just covered in the last class. Uh, we finished the section, looked at the third and the fourth point of what is worship. And uh, try to understand a little bit more on, on the verse, uh, John chapter four, verse 23 and 24, what it really means to worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? Um, Sorry. Sorry guys, I wanted to I wanted to give us uh, another scripture. I don't know where I wrote it and where it's gone. So <laughs> oh great. Okay. Okay, never mind. Sorry, apologies. Uh Okay, so uh, yeah, we, we saw that the, it is the Holy Spirit that ab uh, who abides in us, empowers us to worship him in spirit. And we also worship him in truth, which simply means uh, worshiping him according to the revealed word of God. Okay. Um, so that was the last section uh, of the chapter. Uh, but uh, what I want to do right now is uh, just share briefly uh, on the topic of encounter, um, because on in the, in the fourth point, um, it's not in your notes, by the way. I, I'm going to share my screen, and I'll share this share this PDF uh, later in the stream section. Okay, so uh, you don't have to look at your notes. All you have to do is look at the screen. Okay, um, John has already heard me speak on the subject. Apologies, John. But uh, it is going back to that fourth point. Um, you know, we, we see that uh, worship is a response to an encounter with God, isn't it? Um, and this word uh, encounter is such a big deal in, in the context of worship in, uh, you know, uh, in the Christian, uh, in a Christian walk, we keep talking about this word encounter with the Lord. I had this encounter with God. So uh, I felt like, uh, you know, adding this to the subject uh, will just help us understand a little bit more better. Okay. And I hope that's all right. Um, as mentioned, you know, I will share this PDF in the class stream section for you to, uh, you know, take a look at it later. All right. Um, so encounter. Uh, what what is an encounter? You know what is the dictionary definition to it? Okay, it says encounter by definition simply means to experience or be faced with unexpectedly be faced with or experience something hostile, difficult, or or whatever. Okay, um, so that's that's what an encounter is. Okay, uh, and uh, coming face to face with an unexpectation okay there's an unexpected uh, you know encounter with the reality okay uh, more definitions uh, on encounter means um, some things up with my computer okay sorry encounter means to meet face to face unexpectedly an encounter in, involves an element of surprise uh, of an element of suddenness it means to meet someone or to meet someone in a way that you have not expected it to be. Okay, it means to meet someone or meet someone in a way that you have not expected it to be. Um, the last definition says an encounter does not mean a secondhand report about a person or a situation. It means a face-to-face -face meeting. 
Okay, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we've all had this, uh, we've, we've come across a situation where, uh, you know, your friend will tell about another friend that you have not met yet. It's like, okay, hey, you know what, this person is like this, this, this so-and-so person is like that, he looks like this, you know, she looks like that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you come face to face with that person, you are confronted with the reality. I mean, it's like, you say, okay, hey, you are nothing like how I imagined you to be. Are you getting what I'm saying, right? Uh, so it, it changes the perspective, okay? So the fourth point there, as it mentions, is an encounter does not mean a second-hand report. So when you, when you encounter someone or something, okay, you have like the first-hand report. You know you've tasted and you've seen, you've experienced it. That is what an encounter is. So to encounter God means to meet him face to face and expect that something unexpected will happen as a result of that encounter. Okay, to encounter God means to meet him face to face and expect that something unexpected will happen as a result of that encounter. It is a divine appointment which is marked by his presence, his power and his deliverance. When you encounter Jesus, you are forever changed by the experience. Okay, so uh, why an encounter with God matters? Why is it important? You know, why why is it important? You know, what's the big deal about it? Why do we have to learn about it? Why do we have to uh, you know go a little bit more deeper into this? Okay, and how is it related to worship? We'll see that in, in the sections to come, okay? So why an encounter with God matters? You need an encounter with God to start a relationship with God. It's a very simple point, right? It is somewhere uh, in our life, we encountered the love of God. We encountered the grace of God. We encountered his mercy in our lives. We've tasted somewhere in our journey, right? We've encountered that. So that encounter, that initial encounter, initiated a relationship with the Lord, right? So we need to have an encounter with God to start a relationship with God. And so if you don't see flashes of lightning or hear the audible voice of God, you don't see the heavens open, uh, doesn't mean that you haven't encountered him. Okay, if you don't see things like what Isaiah saw or Ezekiel saw, doesn't mean that, okay? Uh, it, it, it's because at some point in our lives, we've encountered his love, grace, like mentioned, uh, you know, we are where we are. And what is happening in those moments is that God is planting a seed in our hearts. Okay, and this seed is the beginning of something beautiful. Okay. Um, so that is that's why it's important. Okay, the first point is that we need uh, we need an encounter with God to start a relationship with God, and then the seeds are never meant to stay as seeds, isn't it? Encounters with God builds our faith. Okay, so your relationship with God starts with an encounter, but it continues by faith. Okay, so seeds are never meant to stay seeds. They are made to grow. Okay, so likewise, faith isn't meant to stay a seed in our hearts, but it is destined to grow. So in order for a seed to grow into a healthy tree, uh, we, we need a good soil, water, sunlight, etc., etc. So similarly, life isn't always going to be easy in those wilderness seasons you need to have faith to continue and encounters are like water to our heart they increase our faith right encounters with the lord is like like a water like a good soil like a good uh, you know light of sunrise uh, hitting uh, hitting us it increases our faith it helps that seed to keep growing and growing, okay? So encounters with God builds our faith. Um, so let's look, uh, look at a few very familiar encounters from the Bible that people have had, okay? Uh, and all of 
and you all know all of these uh, characters that we are that we are looking at. Okay, so um, Abraham's encounter with God. Uh, you know what happens uh, in in his journey of faith. He's known as the father of faith, isn't it? Uh, it's very interesting in the life of Abraham and Sarah and Jacob. One of the first thing that God does in this encounter is that He changes their identity. Right? It changes their identity. It's like he's bringing them into his reign, into his rule, into his kingdom, into his family. Like it's That's what baptism also means. Baptism simply means immersion. It's like bringing them in to his fellowship. Okay, So uh, Abram becomes Abraham. Uh, you know, Jacob, uh, his name is changed to Israel. And, you know, in Genesis 30, um, Jacob names that place as Peniel, which means I have seen God face to face. Right? So uh, we know the encounter of Abraham. Uh, we know the story of um, Jacob. This is just a few. Okay? Uh, and, you know, we the encounter of Paul. Okay, so who is Paul? Uh, according to uh, the Bible, okay, we see that Paul is a devout Jew. He's known as the Pharisee of the Pharisees. Um, he's religious. He's a persecutor of the Christians, uh, right? He persecuted the church. He killed uh, those who believed in Jesus. Okay, in Acts chapter eight, verse three, you see that Paul, uh, sorry, Saul, began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, the way were the Christians, the people of uh, who followed Jesus were known as the people of the way, right? Who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Okay, you see, he was a very passionate persecutor of Christians. And what happens? Encounter with the Lord. He encounters Jesus. Okay, uh, he goes blind for three days uh, and, and he's a changed man. And what is happening there is that he's having a revelation of Jesus and the cross. Why do you persecute me? Jesus asked him, isn't it? So he's having this encounter with him. And in that encounter, there is this revelation of who this Jesus is. Okay, so in every encounter we have, guys, there is a revelation of who, who this Jesus is. Right? Just like we read in Psalm 145, okay, there is new reason. That means there's this new revelation, ongoing revelation, just like the creatures in Revelation chapter 4, uh, you know, like they have unlimited perspective, ongoing revelation of who God is, which leads to, uh, you know, unending worship. That is what is happening in every encounter. And that's, what's ha that's what happened here in uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. We see that, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul writes, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. A guy who persecuted the church, who, um, who murdered Christians, who went to the officials asking for letters, official letters, so that he can, you know, take pr uh, Christians into prisoners. That one encounter with him, with Jesus, changes everything, his, his entire course of life. Right? That's just another character. But... Uh, one of my favorite uh, encounters in the Bible um, is mentioned in John chapter 20. Uh, can we all just go to John chapter 20, please? Is everybody doing all right? Yeah, are you with me? Okay, I hope you are. John chapter 20, everybody. Okay, John chapter 20, verse 1 onwards. I'll read it for us. It says, Early on the first day of the week, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene 
went to the tomb and saw that the, to the stone had been removed. While it was still dark, she ran. Verse 2. So she came running back to Simon Peter and other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they have put him. Verse 3. So the Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. So John runs faster than Peter and he reaches the tomb first. Verse 5. Interesting. Okay, pay attention. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there but did not go in. It's amazing the details the Bible records. Okay, why does it have to mention that they, okay, he reached it, but he did not go in. It's amazing. Verse 6, Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. So Peter sees the strips of linen lying there, verse 7, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, John, also went inside. He saw and he believed and believed. Verse 9. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to, raise, had to rise from the dead. Verse 10. Here's where the story takes a different uh, turn. Verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She did not go back. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. Mary sees two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the end, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked a the woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord. They've taken my Lord away, she said. It has to be the first time in the Bible where a person you know, sees angels and uh, where the angel doesn't say, do not be afraid. Mary was like, must have been like, I couldn't care less about you, but I can't find Jesus. I'm not impressed with angels. Like Moses, you know, when God says, I will send my angels before you. It's like, if your presence does not go with me, we are not going. That must have been Mary's stage here. It's like, okay, two angels, it's all cool, you know. And every time you read in the Bible, you see God sending one angel to meet with a person. And then, you know, here, uh, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And, you know, it must have been like, man, this is just too special a moment. I'm going to send just two angels. And she still doesn't care. Uh, and Mary is like, they have taken my Lord away. You see where her heart is, right? She said, and I don't know where they have put him. Verse 14, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Mary, thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have put him. I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, she says, Rabboni, which means teacher. Just, just look at uh, that, um, that verse, verse 15. When Jesus asked, so why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? And, uh, and she says, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Um, 
Oh boy. Um, how many of us know how heavy a dead body is? It's pretty heavy and uh, it's, it's not impossible, but it's very hard uh, for it to be carried by one single person. It's very heavy, right? But here, Jesus, Mary is saying, Mary was willing to love on a dead Jesus. She was not there like, I don't want, I don't want any more deliverance. I don't want any more healing. I don't want any more blessing. I'm, I'm, I don't want him for what he can do. I want him for who he is. And at that point, Jesus calls her by her name, Mary. and She turned towards him. Um, verse 17, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, Mary, for I have not yet returned to the Father. That means there was something else on Jesus' calendar that he wanted to do. But then it was her desperation for Jesus that made Jesus stop by. Okay, Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father, Mary. But go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. That last line, that last verse um, in verse 18, I have seen the Lord. The result of hunger, the result of desperation, the result of just waiting a little longer on him, the, res the result of just wanting Jesus for Jesus and not something that he can do results in this, that I have seen the Lord. And, uh, you know, when I was reading this scripture a few, you know, some many years ago, once again, you know, Holy Spirit just so beautifully reminded me and he asked me to, you know, just go to Second, uh, sorry, Song of Songs. Um, if I can quickly find it. Song of Songs, chapter 3. Okay, um, Song of Songs, chapter 3. This thing of John 20, John chapter 20, was, uh, was just so beautifully kind of prophet, prophesied so many thousands, hundreds of years ago. Okay, in Songs of Song, Song of Songs, chapter 3, it says, verse 1 onwards, All night long on my bed, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him, but did not find him. I will get up now and go about the city, through its streets and squares. I will search for the one my heart loves. Pay attention to this. So I looked for him, but did not find him. Verse 3. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them. When I found the one my heart loves, I held him and would not let him go. I held him and would not let him go. Um, Song of Songs, some agree, some don't agree uh, as, a, as a metaphor or as, a, or as an analogy uh, between the church and uh, a church as the bride of Christ and Jesus as the bridegroom. But then the same imagery, in a way, it's happening here in John 20, 20, isn't it? When, when Mary was just waiting on, waiting for the one that her heart longed for, when she found, she held on to him so much that Jesus had to say, like, don't hold on to me, Mary, for, I'm not, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Okay, um, so this is such a powerful, powerful encounter, uh, you know, and that that results in just she's the first evangelist. 
It's awesome, isn't it? So three lessons from Mary's encounter with Jesus that we can take away. Intentional, hunger, desperation, brokenness, and humility. Uh, intentional. First verse, John chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, as soon as the Sabbath got over, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She must have not slept all night. She was intentional. She already planned. She intended to go and look for Jesus. She was intentional. She was hungry. When, when Simon and John went back, she stayed outside the tomb crying. She was desperate, you know, even to an extent, it's like asking, you know, tell me where you have laid him. I will go get him. I don't know what you wanted to do, but she was desperate. She was broken. She was humble enough to say, I want him. I want more of him. Right. Uh, because desperation, right? This desperation, brokenness, hunger, these those things are like a magnet it's like a, what's to say a black hole right when we walk in that such desperation heaven just can't ignore and time and time again you know we read in the bible that god says i saw the tears of anna i saw the cry of hagar and her kid and he always responds. And so God always responds when we get desperate for him, when we get broken before him, when we come in humility before him. Okay, that's point one. And two, uh, sorry, the second uh, lesson in her encounter, Mary's encounter with Jesus is that she was focused. She couldn't care less about the two angels. <laughs> uh, so she wasn't impressed. Yeah, angels, you know, if if it was me, I was like, angels, oh, you know, wow, you know, but she was focused. I want Jesus. I'm looking for the one my heart loves. And just pause and ask yourself this question. Who is it, the one that your heart loves? Is it Jesus? Is your heart looking for something else or someone else? besides Jesus? Is your heart focused or is your heart fixed? Is your eyes fixed on Jesus? And finally, um, the third point is persistence and patience. With intentionality and focus, it's relatively easy to have an encounter with God. He's already promised that when we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. She waited, she waited. Peter and John went back home, but she stayed back. She persisted. She was patient. Okay, um, so those are th uh, the three lessons from Mary's encounter with Jesus. It's a beautiful encounter. Uh, it's one of my favorite encounters in the Bible. Um, and so, and just going on to another section. What are the results of an encounter? Okay, the effects of an encounter, uh, you know, it could be different. It's it's so different to different individuals. Uh, but, you know, we may experience a freedom that you've never known before, a new confidence in God's love, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, a boundless joy in the goodness of God. Uh, but whatever happens, we find that many people experience the following changes. One, an encounter to lead us to a repentance. We see that in Psalm 51. At the encounter, most people will come face to face with their own sinfulness. Uh, when Isaiah uh, has this encounter with the Lord, and then after he sees everything that he sees, he says, Woe unto me, for I am a man of unclean lips. When we come face to face with the Holy One, the most Holy One, you kind of see yourself as like, okay, now I know who I am, <laughs> right? And that leads to repentance. And there's a sense of new direction. Okay, when Peter and Andrew, ordinary fishermen, encountered Jesus, uh, their lives took a drastic new direction. 
from fishermen, they went on to become the fishers of men. And finally, the last result of an encounter with the Lord is a transformed heart. When Jacob had an encounter with the Lord, his relationship with his brother Esau changed. Um, so all of the above, repentance, new direction, uh, and transformed heart, uh, just leads to one thing, that is worship. Right, so as we uh, as we saw in that fourth point in your notes, that worship is our response to an encounter with the Lord. Okay, um, so ask yourself this question: What if you encounter God today? What would you do? What have you done with the encounters you have had with God so far? And what's an encounter with God you've had that has marked your life? Okay, um, I'm, I, this quote is actually by Bill Johnson. I, I forgot to give credit there, but he says, you were created for encountering God and you will never be satisfied until you continually live in the experience for which you were created. Okay, you were created for encountering God and you will never be satisfied until you continually live in the experience for which you were created. Okay, um, so, so that's the end of, uh, that's just a brief study on encounter. Why is it important for us to have uh, an encounter with the Lord? What have we done with the encounters that we've had so far? Um, you know, what can we learn from some of the encounters that people have had in the Bible? As just as one example, we saw, uh, if you three lessons that we that we could take away from Mary's encounter with Jesus. It's that it should encourage us, it should push us, it should motivate us uh, to be focused, to be hungry, to, to be desperate, uh, and humbly seek after him more. Right? Um, everybody doing well? Are you, are you guys with me? Did I lose you all? Okay, um, so I mean, after just looking at all of this, do you think that an encounter with the Lord is important? Yes. Do you long for an encounter with Him? Okay. Right. Uh, the teacher side in me wants to continue and you know with uh, the chapter but uh, just feel like we need to just pause at this moment uh, we just pause and uh, just like Mary uh, can we just wait on him uh, you know just to take this time Let's just take this time and uh, just settle our hearts. And just, just lift your prayers up to him and say, my heart's been divided for too long. My heart has been fixed on too many other things but you, Lord. I've been focused on everything else but you, Lord. I've been focused on my worries uh, about tomorrow, my fears about tomorrow. I've been focused on my insecurities. I've been focused on my, my pain, uh, what I'm going through. I've been focused on the storms all around me. But I just want to stand still right now in your presence. I want to recognize your presence. I want to acknowledge your presence.
and just say that I am hungry for you. I'm desperate for you, God. Can we just take uh, another 30 seconds or a minute um, and let the Holy Spirit minister to you, yeah? Is that okay? Just take a minute or so, we just... Let's take a break from all the theory that we've learned. You know, so many things, so many points, so many steps. Let's just open up our hearts. So Father, we, uh, I pray in your name. Lord, thank you for this privilege, this incredible privilege that we have to come to your throne of grace just as we are and to call you Abba Father. And so Father, Everything that we are learning about worship. Lord, I pray that we will worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Beyond, beyond the points, beyond the theory of our understanding, beyond the definitions of worship, Lord, I pray that, that you would release an encounter, that we, will, that we will walk into an encounter with you, God that defies definition. So we open up our hearts and I pray, Father, that, that you would encounter each and every single person, Father, in this class. Lord, I pray that, that you would see the hungry heart, a desperate heart. Lord, I pray that you would see a humble heart. I thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, is, is there anything uh, that you, uh, does anybody want to share? Uh, any insight uh, from what we've learned? What kind of stood out to you? What would be your key takeaway? Feel free to share. Yes, Divya, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Vesta. Uh, so, uh, this uh, encounter uh, with God, uh, all those encounters mentioned in the Bible has always been very fascinating uh, because uh, I think each person has a you know, unique revelation about God. Maybe it is, and one thing that is really common is um, the holiness aspect of God. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and how even in the Old Testament, like uh, God is revealing himself progressively, like I am Jehovah uh, Jireh, I'm Jehovah Rapha, so that progressive revelation through different encounters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and um, one thing that, one thing that uh, I really, uh, you know, did not know uh, was, even after becoming a Christian for a long time, 
um, I mean, uh, I always try to do things for God, but uh, uh, so it was a constant struggle for me. And uh, there was a time when God put this word inside me, like be still and know that I'm God. And it was a, a, a very um, precious, it was very precious for me because, yeah, I was like those disciples, maybe in the st uh, storm, right? Uh, they are just, you know, they're not looking and they're not realizing that God is there right, right there with them. But he's just telling me still and know that I'm God, have a revelation of who I am. So, yeah, the encounter with God really uh, helped me with the response, you know, to the right response, yeah. rather than me trying or striving to do things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, I just want to share. Thank you. Thank you, Devya. Thanks for sharing. Um, anybody else you guys want to share um, any insight from what we covered today? We will conclude with that. Anybody? Yes, uh, Alice, go ahead. Yeah, so the uh, biggest takeaway for me was like uh, when you were sharing the greatness of God, you know, becomes more greater when, you know, when we, when we uh, you, you know, obey him. So the obedience become the you know the factor to to see a more greater God or to see you know uh, the greatness of God in more more deeper way. So yeah, yeah. so that was like a key takeaway. Awesome. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Okay, and just one more person, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Priya, thank you for sharing. Yeah, he has the power to cleanse us from all the sins. Yes, and we just need to seek his heart. Yes, amen. All right, just one more person. Um, key takeaway from today's lesson, and we'll conclude. Can I share something? Sure, Isaac, please go ahead. Yes, um in the story of the encounter, first encounter with the, the Lord, I'm just saying that sometimes in our lives, it is the Lord himself who prompts the encounter. Because from what I saw, or what we see from Paul's encounter with the Lord, his motive was different. In fact, he was going about uh, persecuting, killing, destroying Christians. What, I, what I'm saying, God saw, God saw that maybe he needed him or we, or we needed him. So I said God from the encounter because it was not Paul's uh, uh, intention to have an encounter with the Lord. In fact, it was the contrary. But God encountered him on the road yes. to Damascus. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Isaac. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thank you all for sharing. Um, thank you for being part of class today. Um, I hope everybody could take away something from today's class. Um, I will share the encounter notes on the class stream section. Um, please feel free to download it. Okay. Um, I will stop the recording. Um, thank you all for joining. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I'll see you all next week. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you.